Now in 4 News Now at 6, Spokane County voters asked to approve two controversial measures why some say Prop 1 should be taken off the ballot. And the snow is moving out. We've had even colder temperatures moving in. I'll let you know when we could drop down to the teens in your first alert forecast. And a local firefighter with decades of experience on leave because of a brain tumor. Why he's not qualified for workers' comp and what his family is doing to help fix it. You're watching 4 News Now at 6 o'clock and we begin with breaking news. Spokane County Sheriff's Office is asking for help finding this missing 12-year-old boy. Kaiden Fuller was last seen leaving his home on Monday. Investigators believe he could be in danger. He was last seen wearing a white Spokane Indians hat, black baseball jacket, tan pants and brown Nike shoes. If you see him, you're asked to call Crime Check. The number on your screen now, 509-456-2233. Well, two people are in jail tonight accused of stealing eight cars from a North Spokane car dealership. Thanks for joining us. I'm Derek Dice. Kirsten O'Connor has the night off. Police say one of the thieves rappelled through the roof to get into the room where the keys were kept. Security cameras show a man stealing a minivan before returning an hour later with friends. Investigators say 19-year-old Fran Anunar and 20-year-old Heron Linfield were just two of the people involved. A third person has been identified but has not yet been charged. All but one of those cars has been recovered. And since 5 o'clock, I-90 is reopened over Lookout Pass after a jackknife semi completely closed the freeway this afternoon. So good news for anyone heading over Lookout. Well, many of you saw your first snow of the season this morning. That snow only stopped just in the last couple of hours. Meteorologist Matt Grayson for Chris Crocker tonight with what's next in our forecast. Yeah, we had quite the uh, winter introduction here as we are coming to the end of the month of October, but it certainly is not going to feel like it, especially in the mornings. Tonight, the snow will move out and we'll have our first hard freeze of the season. Really, in many places this morning, we saw our first freezing temperatures of the season. Just shows you how warm our fall had been up to this point with all of that snow falling today. Now, as we head into the weekend, winter like cold temperatures. We're talking about teens and low 20s. We can even see a few areas drop into the low teens for the start of the weekend too, but we are going to warm up at least slightly by the time we get to Halloween. Here's the culprit here on the back side of this storm system that's about to leave our area. We have winds out of the north that are going to be bringing down lots of chilly air and our temperatures are really going to reflect that in the days to come or more specifically the nights to come. Our average low this point in the year usually hovers just above freezing. Well, today our highs were hovering just above freezing and you know what that means. We're down into the 20s and take a look Friday night into Saturday morning. I expect to be very cold and cold enough that even in Spokane, we might get down to the upper teens. So there's some places that could even reach the teens tonight. In fact, there's a few spots that I expect to we will be going over that in the next hour plus still tracking a little bit of snow out there this evening. I'll show you where it is and where it's headed next. All right, Matt, thank you. Tomorrow, a Latah County judge will hear arguments on why the case against the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students should be thrown out. Brian Koberger's lawyer citing grand jury bias, insufficient evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct. Because of the gag order, we don't know what the grand jury, grand jury saw before agreeing to the indictment. We will have a crew in the courtroom to bring you the very latest in this case. Be sure to download the KXY app and turn on those push notifications to get the most up-to-date information on the U of I murders along with the rest of the day's top stories sent straight to your phone. Well, Election Day, now just 13 days away in Spokane County, voters are being asked to approve two controversial measures. Measure one would increase the sales tax to help fund a new jail. Proposition one would make it illegal to camp near certain places in the city of Spokane, like schools and daycares. Robin Nance explains why some are against this plan. Voters in Spokane are being asked to decide on whether the city should tighten parameters around where homeless people can camp. Spokane City Proposition 1 would not allow encampments within 1,000 feet of any public or private school, public park, playground, or licensed childcare facility. 
Right now, city code simply doesn't allow for camping underneath or within 50 feet of any railroad viaduct in downtown Spokane and within three blocks of a homeless shelter. Prop 1 would change that. It would also make it illegal to leave personal camping items and equipment within 1,000 feet of schools, parks, playgrounds, and daycares. Those arguing for this measure say homeless camps bring issues with drugs, crime, indecent exposure, sexual assault, and other crimes, and that Prop 1 will keep children safe from these types of crimes. They also say it will help keep community spaces healthy and clean and would save taxpayer dollars because the city wouldn't have to clean up mounds of litter, human waste, and dangerous drug paraphernalia. They want you to vote yes on Prop 1. Now, those arguing against Spokane Prop 1 say it vastly limits where homeless people can go and puts vulnerable communities at risk of sweeps and incarceration. They refer to this map with an overlay of where people would be allowed to camp, only the areas that are shaded in green. The opposition says the proposition is likely to create more situations like Camp Hope because of the limited spaces homeless people are allowed, driving those people into neighborhoods that do not have the capacity to assist them. The opposition wants you to vote no on Spokane City's Proposition 1. Well, today a hearing was held on Proposition 1, but a decision was deferred. Jules Helping Hands issued an appeal to a decision made in August. That decision said the proposed ban on camping within 1,000 feet of schools and playgrounds should be up to the voting public. Julie Garcia, the founder of Jules Helping Hands, argued the decision should be up to administrators like the city council instead. Land use has always been a city council focused process with citizens going in and changing something that's already been put, it then takes away the right of our elected officials to make that decision, and there's no regulation over it. Garcia went on to say this could lead to unsafe gathering in neighborhoods. Now, Mark Lamb represents Brian Hansen, the author of Prop 1, who believes this decision should be left in the public's hands. And it's critical that the people of Spokane be allowed to legislate. It's critical that the people of Spokane have the right to vote to protect their children and to have a clean and safe uh, community. Decision was not made in today's hearing. According to attorney Noel Lowney, this process could take anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, and election day is just two weeks away on November the 7th. You're also being asked for your two cents on funding a new jail along with other criminal justice projects. If Measure 1 is approved, the sales tax in Spokane County would increase by 0.2%. That's two cents for every $10 spent. That would generate $1.7 billion over 30 years. 60% of that would go to the county and the rest would be split between cities and towns. To learn why supporters, including Sheriff John Knowles, say this money is necessary and why critics call this a blank check for a broken system, you can look for my ballot breakdown story on KXLY.com. And if you have any questions about public safety, camping ordinances, or really anything on the November ballot, we'd like to hear from you. Just go to KXLY.com and look for our For the People stories. All right, still ahead, election officials in Kootenai County want to make sure you have everything you need to cast your vote. What you'll need to bring with you before heading to the polls coming up on 4 News Now at 6. Four News Now on your time with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Saving you green. Join us for jackpot food and fun at Mystica Casino Hotel. Spokane, you have a choice. We can support leaders who want to stand up and protect our community, or we can surrender to crime and homelessness like Bessie Wilkerson, who voted to defund drug investigations. That means she doesn't care about her kids dying of fentanyl overdoses. She also voted against barring homeless camps near schools, parks, and playgrounds. Spokane, let's choose to protect our kids and fight crime. That's why law enforcement and the Spokane Police Guild support Kim Please for council president. Five stars all rise for To Kill a Mockingbird. Unmissable and unforgettable. A mockingbird for our moment. Beautiful, elegiac, satisfying, even exhilarating. A New York Times critic's pick. Mockingbird is now the most successful American play in Broadway history. All rise for Aaron Sorkin's great play. 
Richard Thomas is Atticus Finch in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. December 5th through 10th at First Interstate Center for the Arts. Tickets at broadwayspokane.com. Hondas are piggy banks on wheels. Stylish, athletic piggy banks that save you money at every glorious turn. Legendary fuel efficiency, famous for its resale value, and now with great deals including two years complimentary maintenance, it's your chance to get into America's best value brand. So start saving money and drive happy as a pig in Sear Inland Northwest Honda dealer today. Honda can handle it. from the headlines Halloween costumes. Next in some edition, Britney Spears with Knives, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. These two lovebirds are all of the rage. Barbie and Ken, Beyonce, even a space alien. The hottest costumes for Halloween 2023. Then, we're used to seeing robot animals at Disney World like this. But what happens when the bear is real? Next in some edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. You want to help them because you might have a neat day, but the people that you're trying to help are having the worst day in their world, and you want to try to make that a little better. That was Ron Cato's reason for dedicating 30 years of his life to firefighting. Cato recently took a leave of absence after finding out he had a brain tumor. Because the majority of his service was as a volunteer firefighter, he doesn't qualify for coverage. Marissa Rio shares his story. Ron Cato worked for several different agencies during his time as a firefighter, including here at Fire District 10 in Airway Heights. He recently had to give it all up. Just last month, he was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Cato has glioblastoma. While he only served for one full year as a career firefighter, he did the same type of work as a volunteer. A good way to look at volunteer or career firefighters is if you're having an emergency, you just want a firefighter to show up. And when one shows up, you don't ask if they're career or volunteer because it's all the same. Chief Henry worked with Cato for nearly 10 years and says he credits him a lot for his success. Ron was top line on that. He worked with patients on fires, on hazmat incidents, uh, medical. Uh, he drove an ambulance for quite a while. And if it weren't for cancer, Cato would still be out there trying to help people. If we don't have anybody that tries to make things better, you can't do that. You, you gotta, you gotta help, period. That's my philosophy. Washington State Labor and Industries acknowledges these risks, and that's why the state has a law that makes it easier for firefighters to receive workers' compensation. They recognized that firefighters are exposed to toxic fumes and situations in their employment that cause them to have a higher rate of certain types of illnesses. But because Cato only served for one full year as a paid firefighter, he doesn't qualify. Cato has had 80% of the tumor removed, but still has to go through chemo and radiation. His son has scheduled meetings with state representatives to try and get his dad some help. Reporting in Spokane, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. Even though a lot of the snow today did not stick, there's still plenty of wet roads and wet side rocks across the inland northwest. As we cool off tonight to a hard freeze, you may see some patches of ice as you're headed out the door tomorrow morning. Something to keep in mind as we enter a cold stretch of weather that'll last through the weekend. We'll show you how chilly it'll get coming up. Download the 4 News Now app today. 4 News Now is brought to you by P1FCU. The all-new Bet Ahead feature is now live at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Casino. Make your picks online from anywhere before you place your cash bets. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. Look who's coming to GMA this week. Shark Tank's Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary is here live. YouTube's super phenom Ms. Rachel is here live. Hello. And tomorrow, we're giving away World Series tickets live. Could they be yours on Good Morning America? The most important issue in this mayor's race? 
crime and public safety. I'm Nadine Woodward. We cannot let Spokane become Seattle. It's why I increased police patrols, opened new precincts, and got dangerous offenders off the streets with our Violent Crimes Task Force. My opponent? She's helped fund criminals and is supported by anti-police activists. I'm proud to be endorsed by law enforcement. I'm Nadine Woodward, and I approve this message. Let's make crime illegal again. Did you see this? It says most people are going to need long-term care that health insurance and Medicare won't cover. I saw that, and it got me thinking, if I need to pay for home modifications or in-home care, I am not prepared. Are you? Not really. I mean, whatever happens, I just want to know that I'll be able to get care and stay in my own home as I age. Right? I want that, too. So, uh... Find out how the WA Cares Fund can help. Andy's Heating, Cooling, Electrical. Guarantees to keep your home safe and warm. Your comfort is Andy's priority. Get ready for the cold with a high-efficiency furnace from Carrier and turn to the experts. Andy's offers a wide range of top-quality heating systems that are both reliable and environmentally friendly. Andy's team of experts are highly trained and experienced, so you can trust Andy's to diagnose and fix any issue efficiently. Andy's Heating, Cooling, Electrical. Your trusted Carrier experts since 1972. The all-new Bet Ahead feature is now live at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Casino. Make your picks online from anywhere before you place your cash bets. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. Al baño! Al baño! What you just heard was a man in Acapulco, Mexico, yelling for his family to get into the bathroom as Hurricane Otis shatters the windows. Otis making landfall as a Category 5 storm. That's the strongest storm to ever hit Mexico's Pacific coast. As of now, there are no reports of casualties, but the storm knocked out communications networks. Pretty scary stuff there for sure, Matt. Scary stuff, unprecedented for that part of the world. And just two days ago, it was a weak tropical storm. So the rapid intensification of hurricanes is really something in the last few years that people are drawing a lot of attention to, and for very good reason, because of things you see right there with almost no time to prepare. We certainly had a bead on preparing for a little bit of wintry weather in the inland northwest. And thankfully, it was warm enough this morning that a lot of us did not see much of it stick. And that really helped out with road conditions this morning. I'll take snow that doesn't stick anytime, 10 times out of 10. But we are seeing still a little bit of snow tonight, even though this main band here that's now moved north to Spokane and Coeur d'Alene has started to be faded away a little bit just as we expected. But there is still basically from the north side of Hayden through Athol, Bayview, north all the way to Sandpoint and then across Southern end of Bonner County into the Newport and Old Town area. We're still seeing a little bit of snow coming down right now. This will continue to break up over the next couple of hours, and then we will be a lot quieter. One place that isn't going to be as quiet, but has been, at least when it comes to snowfall, has been around the Palouse and towards the Blue Mountains. We're actually going to see a little bit more activity here as we go through the night and into the early hours of tomorrow morning. And that's because this moisture that's kind of wrapped around here and is sitting over central Washington will start to get going again as we head late into the night and early into tomorrow morning. And so tomorrow morning, around places like Pullman, Moscow, Pomeroy, Lewiston, down into Orofino and the Camas Prairie, we'll be looking for some scattered snow showers. We may even see some very minor accumulations. Could create a couple of slick spots on the roads, but this is pretty widely scattered stuff. So most of us will be generally okay as we start off the day in the southern half of our viewing area. Everybody else should be fairly quiet as we start things off on what will be a drier Thursday, but we'll keep a very small chance for some snow showers uh, across North Idaho that will develop again as we get into the afternoon. Mostly though, those are gonna be in the high mountain areas. And once again, anything that does get down to the lowlands is gonna be very, very quick. We'll certainly be tracking that for you here on 4 News Now and on KXLY Plus. Uh, temperatures right now already starting to, excuse me, <coughs> drop down towards uh, freezing. 
across much of North Idaho. Pretty warm still on the Palouse. That will change, though, as we head later into the night. Here are our lows, and take a look how cold it's going to get in some of our northern counties. Crank up the heat, everybody. 15 in Colville, 18 in Winthrop tonight. Low 20s in Bonners Ferry and Sandpoint. Mid-20s in Spokane and in Coeur d'Alene. We take a zoom in to the local metro area, Spokane and Kootenai counties. Spirit Lake's down to 19 tonight. Deer Park is down to 18, and there's a lot more places as you head north on Highway 2 and Highway 95 that'll get down into the teens tonight. So yeah, little winter preview coming early to the inland northwest. For tomorrow afternoon, temperatures will be right around 40 degrees. That's a trend that will continue through the weekend. Meanwhile, our temperatures in the mornings just keep getting colder. We finally start to reverse this trend by the time we get to Monday and trick-or-treat time on Tuesday. If you're doing trick-or-treating over the weekend, though, you definitely want the mittens and maybe the extra coat. Same goes for uh, Halloween parties for the adults. <laughs> All right, Matt, thank you. Well, it's no secret there is a teen mental health crisis across the U.S. 20%, 21%, excuse me, of young people in the last year considered taking their own lives in Washington. That's according to the Department of Health. Tonight, ABC's Deborah Roberts explains how sharing your own struggles can help your teen open up. There's no mistaking the bond between Tiffany Turner Moon and 13-year-old daughter Bella. We're very, very, very close. I feel like I can just tell her anything. The 33-year-old mom sharing their relationship on TikTok with her 166,000 followers. So here are five ways I support her mental health and we prep for back to school. And getting candid about their shared mental health struggles. One thing I have learned in my 30s is not only to prioritize my mental health, but to teach my children to prioritize their mental health. When I got pregnant with her, I had to drop out of college. I suffered from depression. I did struggle with my emotions like during tough periods of school. While Tiffany and Bella's connection may be unique, their experience isn't. A recent study from Harvard's Making Caring Common project found that the emotional health of parents and teens is deeply interwoven and that they suffer from anxiety and depression at about the same rates. This sounds like very sad and negative news, but you say that there can be a positive here. Parents who are experiencing anxiety and depression can understand what others who are going through this challenge feel, and that includes their own teens. And these parents have the opportunity to start modeling effective communication. To tap into those positives, experts say parents should first focus on their own mental health. When do you feel most anxious and depressed? Where does it show up in your life? And most importantly, how does it show up in your parenting? On some level, can this make you closer to your teen by struggling together? Of course, they can try practicing coping skills together. If you're modeling it as an adult to be vulnerable, your children will be more vulnerable with you as well. And maybe the most important yet challenging tip, listening, not fixing. Especially when you're an anxious parent, all you want to do is like jump in and save your child from any stresses and any challenges. But what we're hearing from teens is that what they really want you to do as a parent is just to listen. Tiffany and Bella already embracing these strategies and supporting each other. We practice mental health days. She struggles from anxiety. So when she's just like, listen, I'm really struggling. Sometimes we'll just go out, get out in the sunlight. And when I'm having anxiety, she's soothing. Like even as a teenager, she'll be like, mommy, just breathe. It's not just her learning from me. I've learned a lot, a lot from her. It feels nice to just have someone to talk to who's not going to judge me, but help me walk through it. And that was ABC's Deborah Roberts reporting. If you or someone you know is experiencing a mental health or emotional crisis, call or text the 24-7 National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. The number there on your screen, 988, to speak with a trained counselor for free and confidential support. Well, the House of Representatives finally has a new speaker. Why some Democrats are concerned about his voting record coming up after the break. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. At Joya Child and Family Development, little ones with developmental challenges are surrounded with support so they can reach their full potential. Whether helping a child reach important milestones or uncovering a specific need, Joya offers specialized services so every child can thrive. Yeah. Numeric is honored to partner with organizations like Joya as they enhance lives, fulfill dreams, and build communities. Boop. Check out more organizations that make our community yeah. stronger at numericacu.com.
local at the Tin Roof. Property crime increasing. Shootings in our parks. Homelessness crisis getting worse. Spokane, it doesn't have to be this way. Safer neighborhoods, a vibrant downtown, and people in need getting real help. That's my vision for our future. I'm Kim Please, candidate for Spokane City Council President. I'm a new voice for Spokane, and I'm asking for your vote. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein. 30 grams of protein, 1 gram sugar, 25 vitamins and minerals, and nutrients for immune health. Why do things disappear throughout Lisa Brown's career? Is it to hide her agenda, like the unpopular homeless encampment proposal, which quietly vanished from her website? Is it to cover up radical associations, like convicted terrorist Michael Poulin, her partner on a recent campaign event? Or is it something worse? The state auditor found that half a billion federal dollars disappeared from public accounting during Brown's tenure as Director of Commerce. That's over 500 million reasons Brown shouldn't be Spokane's mayor. Reasons that won't disappear. Mira Sorvino, you are one of two Oscar winners to ever play Celebrity Jeopardy. Oh, wow. What is below the equator? What are bears? What is Quidditch? Yes, you're good on fictional sports, too. This is the career highlight. <laughs> Celebrity Jeopardy, new tonight on ABC. Shop local at the Tin Roof. Ford News Now is brought to you by Mechanics Pride. From the great state of Louisiana and the 56th Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, the Honorable Mike Johnson. Well, it seems the fourth time is the charm with House Republicans finally able to select a new speaker. This vote comes after weeks of bitter infighting among GOP members who ousted former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Some Democrats have shared their concerns about the newly elected speaker, though, given his voting record. CNN's Karen Kaifa explains. Mike Johnson of Louisiana, the new Speaker of the House, saying this afternoon that the People's House is back in business. The mood among House Republicans in the chamber this afternoon was described as buzzy and jubilant as they finally came to an agreement on a House Speaker after more than three weeks. Johnson receiving 220 votes, the unanimous support of Republicans in the chamber, something three nominees before him could not do. House Republicans would they vote Wednesday on their fourth nominee to replace Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Today is the day that House Republicans will humbly look in our hearts and elect Mike Johnson as Speaker of the People's House. And this time, closing the deal. The challenge before us is great, but the time for action is now, and I will not let you down. Late Tuesday, Louisiana Republican Mike Johnson emerged as the latest pick to wield the gavel. After a wild day that saw House Majority Whip Tom Emmer win the nomination and hours later drop his bid, lacking support to win a floor vote. Johnson, an attorney with a focus on constitutional law, was first elected to the House in 2016, serving on the House Judiciary and Armed Services Committees. Mike Johnson is a good man, and I think as you saw last night, that we are ready for a leader. He's a tremendous congressman. An ally of former President Donald Trump, Johnson was a key congressional figure in failed efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries, critical of Johnson's record, but open to finding ways to work together. All Mike Johnson will need to do uh, is to meet us in a bipartisan way, in that fashion, and we'll be able to work together whenever and wherever possible. Members of both parties eager to get back to work. We need to get after the mission, and uh, I feel excited that uh, Mike Johnson's the guy that can bring us together and get us back focused on what we said we would do. And Johnson takes the speaker's gavel with a little more than three weeks to go to avoid a government shutdown. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer said this afternoon that he looks forward to sitting down with Johnson and working on a path forward. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. 
Well, new at 6.30, it's soon going to cost you more to watch Ted Lasso and The Morning Show. Apple announcing it's raising the price of its streaming service to $10 a month. This is the latest streaming service to raise prices this year, joining Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and Max. We have much more coming up tonight at 6.30, including the local connection to the man accused of trying to shut down the engines of a plane in midair and backlash over Spokane County's newly appointed chair of the Racial Equity Committee, why the NCAA, excuse me, NAACP says the county lacks transparency. Stream 4 News now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Have you been looking for the perfect pre-owned vehicle and wondered, where have all the used cars gone? At Coeur d'Alene Honda, we have the best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Whether you're looking for a Toyota, Subaru, Ford, or maybe that perfect Honda. Every pre-owned vehicle is quality inspected and ready for you to take home today. We work with local lenders to get you the rate you deserve. Inventory changes daily, so come see us at Coeur d'Alene Honda or visit us on our website at cdahonda.com. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, head to one of their four participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then, drop your bag off at DeVries where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Pick up your seal and shred bag this Friday at Washington Trust Bank's Lincoln Heights branch. My dry eyes made me a burn. Good evening, I'm Juju Chang at ABC News headquarters here in New York, and we're interrupting your regular programming with breaking news. We're learning details about what officials are calling a mass casualty event playing out in Lewiston, Maine, home to Bates College, about 45 minutes north of Portland, Maine. Law enforcement sources there say at least 16 people are dead and dozens more injured. A bowling alley came under fire, and there are additional reports of shots fired at a local... releasing these photos of the possible shooter. The suspect is still at large and authorities are asking the public to shelter in place and for businesses to remain closed. Maine's governor, Janet Mills, has posted, I am aware of and have been briefed on the active shooter situation in Lewiston. I urge all people in the area to follow the direction of state and local law enforcement. I will continue to monitor the situation and remain in close contact with public safety officials. This is clearly an active shooter event still underway, the suspect still at large. And joining me now is ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky. Aaron, I know you've been on the phone with law enforcement sources. What are you hearing? We're hearing that there are at least preliminarily 16 people that have been killed in this shooting in Lewiston, Maine. That seems to have unfolded in three different locations, as you know, Juju. A bowling alley, a bar or restaurant, and a Walmart distribution center. The fear is there are dozens more injured and numbers are still fluctuating. Right now, because the shooting still remains active and the suspect is not in custody, people are being told to stay indoors. Businesses are being urged to close. Neighboring New Hampshire is setting up roadblocks to prevent a possible escape across state lines. And the FBI is now moving aviation assets into the area to help with the search. And we're seeing now surveillance video, what looks like grainy surveillance images of the suspected shooter. We're seeing police evacuating the area, citizens running clearly on the authority of law enforcement. Joining me now is ABC News Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas. Pierre, what are you hearing? Well, federal authorities are deeply concerned about this. Uh, sources confirming to me multiple, multiple fatalities, multiple injured, as Aaron pointed out, uh, multiple locations, uh, law enforcement um, descending on the area, the FBI sending assets, making all resources available. Uh, I expect that the attorney general will be briefed very shortly on this situation. Uh, again, it's being described to me extremely volatile, extremely dangerous situation with the suspects still at large. 
Pierre, we're also being told that the president has now been briefed on the situation. This is clearly an active shooter situation underway. The suspect still at large. Uh, we talked about federal assets being moved into place. And joining me now is former FBI agent and ABC News contributor Brad Garrett. Brad, I know you're being briefed on this situation too. What are you hearing? Well, the, the big advantage you have here is Lewiston is not that big. You, because you have three locations, I think it really increases the odds that somebody knows who the shooter is. Because you're going to probably or do have survivors in each location, I presume. So with that, you can start tracking this guy. Obviously, the big concern if he's hit three targets and he's continuing to move is that is he going to a fourth or fifth target? Uh, and that's a big concern, obviously, and that's why the shelter in place, et cetera, is, is going on. You will combine assets, as both of them have mentioned, uh, about uh, aviation from the FBI. I mean, you'll get everybody to come out to help you do this. But the real key, obviously, is intelligence. Who is this guy? And I'm going to guess in short order, if they don't know already, who he is. And Brad, what do you make of that image that we're seeing now, that grainy surveillance image? What kind of weaponry are we looking at? Looks like to me an AR-15 or some version of it. It could be an M4, I'd have to see it closer. But uh, it looks like to me uh, that he's got some sort of extended magazine. I mean, typically those weapons, you can maybe shoot up to 25 or 30 rounds with a standard magazine. So. Uh, that, that's why you have so many people shot. I'm going to guess the, the number is probably really big as to the number of people injured. Uh, and you've got to find this guy quickly because is he, as I mentioned earlier, going to go on to another location? Um, but it, that's sadly, Juju, the weapon of choice with these mass shooters. They're easy to shoot. Uh, and if you're shooting in close order, uh, you can really harm a lot of people. And Brad, as Pierre mentioned, a very volatile situation, a suspect still at large, an active shooter situation underway in Lewiston, Maine. Aaron Katursky, what more can you add in terms of perspective on this unfolding situation? Well, Maine State Police are now urging people to stay in their home with doors locked. Law enforcement is currently investigating at multiple locations. Maine State Police say stay off the streets, allow law enforcement to defuse the situation. They're very concerned that additional shots could be fired with this suspect still on the loose, and so they are bringing as many assets to bear as they can, aviation, roadblocks in, in neighboring New Hampshire and other resources, with at least 16 people believed to be dead so far, according to law enforcement sources, and dozens more feared to be injured. The main hospital taking uh, the casualties, Central Maine Medical Center, uh, says it is reacting to this mass casualty shooter event. They are not confirming any numbers, but they are going to be overwhelmed, so they're going to be coordinating with additional hospitals in Lewiston and the surrounding area. And once again, the governor of Maine monitoring the situation. We're told that the president has been briefed. Pierre Thomas, what are you hearing from the Justice Department? Well, one of the things to do is in a situation where the president is briefed this quickly, I can tell you that the scale is something that they're deeply, deeply concerned about. Also, uh, a source I was speaking to a moment ago was just mortified at what they were being told. Um, also, the notion that the the weaponry here uh, is something that law enforcement is now going to have to be prepared for. I expect tactical teams to be uh, in play here. Uh, that is an all hands on deck situation uh, with federal authorities trying to get there as soon as possible to offer whatever assistance they can offer. All right, again, at least 16 people killed in a mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. That's a little more than two hours north of Boston. We'll continue following this shooting, of course, throughout the night with our partners at ABC. All right, right now, let's send it over to Matt Gray with a look at that first alert forecast. All right, thank you, Derek. And here is some select samples of the snow that we had today. So this is our start of the fall, winter, and spring. We're three seasons snow climate after all, but that's the start for this brand new season for snow totals around the inland northwest. A lot of us only got some very light accumulations because it ended up being fairly warm this morning, although it's one of the coolest days we've seen so far 
this fall. Now we are still keeping an eye on some snowy weather, particularly in North Idaho. Also some light snow up in the mountains in Ferry County that is starting to dissipate here this evening. Meanwhile, we are also once again, as I mentioned before, tracking a little bit of snow is trying to push its way into the Sandpoint area this evening. So if you live around Sandpoint, you live in Bonner County and you're not seeing snow, you may see a little bit more over the next hour or two as this continues to fade away and we'll see some much quieter conditions in just a few hours. So there will be still a couple isolated snow showers, but most of the activity will move south towards the Palouse region as we head into the wee hours of the morning. Temperatures will be out in the 20s, so it's going to be a chilly start to the day, and we're not going to warm up that much at all on what will be a drier Thursday across the region. For News Now, we'll be right back. Download the 4 News Now app today. 4 News Now is brought to you by Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the musical. At Finley Downtown Toyota, we are loaded with new Tundra and Tacoma trucks, as well as brand new all-wheel drive SUVs just in time for winter. So if you're looking for a touchdown of savings, you can find it at Finley. Injured in a car wreck? Insurance company giving you the runaround? Delays, excuses, and lowball offers. Don't get hurt twice. Get twice the help. Call 800 842 I had a lot of bad days with gout, but that one took the wedding cake. Even with medicine, my uric acid was still too high to stop painful gout buildup. Then a gout specialist told me about Cristexa. Cristexa is a prescription medicine for adults with gout whose symptoms are not controlled by other gout medicines. I learned Cristexa quickly starts working to break down gout buildup. Cristexa is an infused medicine. Serious life-threatening allergic reactions can occur while taking Cristexa. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as shortness of breath, trouble breathing, dizziness, itching, or swelling of the throat or tongue. Cristexa is not recommended if you have high levels of uric acid without a history of gout. Do not take Cristexa if you have a rare disorder called G6PD deficiency or favism. Before receiving Cristexa, tell your doctor if you have a history of heart problems in all the medicines you take. Cristexa may cause gout flare-ups, allergic reactions, nausea, bruising, sore throat, constipation, chest pain, and vomiting. I received Cristexa for about six months. Now I'm in control, not gout. Find a doctor who specializes in gout at goutdocnow.com. One of the inland northwest's most extraordinary four-wheeled beasts, the Honda SUV thrives in a diverse habitat. Comfortable in rugged terrain or roaming city streets, it can travel hundreds of miles on a surprisingly small amount of fuel. Fiercely protective of its young, the Honda SUV is known by its distinctive markings, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline, and can live happily for decades in any garage or driveway. Catch one now at your inland northwest Honda dealer. Honda can handle it. My name is Devin. And my name is Kelly, and Prime Source helped us cut our interest rate in half on our car loan. Melody Wagner helped us by moving it to Prime Source from where we had it. It saved us over 100 bucks a month. Being a family of five, yeah, we're trying to find, you know, cutting corners any way we can to make sure that everything's paid for and to have that extra $100. We're so grateful. Refinance with Prime Source Credit Union. Contact us for details. Welcome back. Spokane's NAACP and other community groups say Spokane County lacks transparency. This after three out of five county commissioners voted to appoint Airway Heights City Council member Jennifer Morton as chair of the county's Law and Justice Council Racial Equity Committee without public input. Bronte Sarotsky shares why these groups are concerned. Well, this concern comes from commissioners appointing Morton without hearing from community members that are directly impacted. On Tuesday, Airway Heights City Council member Jennifer Morton was appointed as chair of the county's racial equity subcommittee. The subcommittee's mission is to address how people of color are disproportionately treated within the region's criminal justice system. But impacted community groups like the NAACP are upset about the lack of transparency and short notice around her appointment. You don't want to hear it and you don't plan on doing anything other than what you've been doing, the way that you've been doing it, which supports the status quo dynamic that harms our communities of color. Curtis Robinson with the NAACP says he wishes commissioners would have spoken to these community groups before Tuesday's vote. They have 
taken what could have potentially been a very meaningful community voice in that by ex experts that have the lived experience and the current context boots on the ground experience they just went with you know what for all intent purposes at this stage of the game looks like status quo dynamics Commissioner Chris Jordan, who voted no to the appointment, agreed and added that the position should be filled by a community member, not an elected official. It's really about the principle of um, seeking outside voices to really um, make sure that SRLJC has a wide range of perspectives represented. But Commissioner Josh Kern says this letter was, quote, unproductive to the appointment. No, but we're looking for people that are willing to work to improve our criminal justice system, not abolish law enforcement and jails. And I think Jennifer is going to do a great job uh, moving our community forward on that. Commissioner Cuny echoed that sentiment. Is uh, someone who has integrity, uh, is honest, is is uh, a woman of color with lived experience. I attempted to reach out to Morton multiple times today for comment and was unsuccessful. Live in studio, Bronte Sorotsky for News Now. And it's Wednesday. You know what that means. It's time for Wildlife Wednesday. We've got a couple good ones for you today. We start off with Nora Jen and Cooley Dam. Taken on a, I think, a warmer day, but she sends us this picture of this belted kingfisher with this huge fish in its mouth. And she said it took about 20 minutes to get this fish down. Uh, so that must have been a fascinating time. But, you know, sometimes your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And I think this bird certainly uh, personifies that. Now, it was a snowy day today, and certainly that kept many people inside. But, you know, sometimes even through the window, you can see some things pretty cool. This uh, comes from Aaron Hutt. She's in the Moran Prairie area, and that is a big old bull moose. Take a look at the beard on him. Definitely ready for winter as the snow was uh, up in the high elevations, higher elevations around town was really whipping this morning. As you can see, that's a big boy right there. And then we have something that I always find fascinating, especially because, well, we always we are so far away from the ocean, but a lot of our local wetlands and marshes often attract seabirds. We've got pelicans and uh, that show up, for example, in the salty uplands. And well, this was right here on the Spokane River. Thanks to Julie for sending us a picture of a seagull here in the middle of a very landlocked part of the Pacific Northwest. So I always found that interesting. We've got some seagulls where I was in Florida, and I was a good good ways away from the beach where I grew up as well. So that is your Wildlife Wednesday. Of course, we'll have Chris come back next week with more of your favorite wildlife photos. Maybe we'll even get some cool wintry scenes with uh, how things are going to progress here as we'll see some pretty, uh, pretty cold nights coming up here. Hard freeze tonight and even colder for the weekend. Our snow chances really going down to only about 20%. Right now... We're in the 30s. We'll fall through the 20s tonight. We'll end up in the mid-20s around Spokane and around Coeur d'Alene. But some places are going to get even chillier than that. We're going to be flirting with the teens in Spirit Lake and Deer Park. But generally in the I-90 corridor, you should expect mid-20s. We'll be a little bit cooler on the South Hill and on the West Plains because of that change in elevation. Let's head further north where we are going to see not only a chance for a little bit of freezing fog, but also quite a few areas in the teens will be in the teens around Priest Lake will be pretty close in Sandpoint. Colville will be in the teens, Cusick as well, and Medellin Falls. So a good chunk of Ponderay County going to be in the teens tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. With a big winter preview. A lot warmer along Highway 97, but still lots of 20s. We'll only we'll get down to 25 tonight. Nomac Republic gets down to 19. Stevens Pass got a lot of snow. There'll be a 23 tonight. Meanwhile, you head further south, a little bit warmer. Vantage is a 34, but Moses Lake still down to the 20s. Could see a little bit of freezing fog there as well. You will definitely want the ice scraper as we head through the night. Here is around the Palouse region where we'll see a few showers through the overnight as well, but no major snow accumulations. Here's your seven day forecast for warming up by Halloween. All right, Matt, thank you. Here's a look at tonight's ABC primetime lineup. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. 
Do you have concrete floors that look like this? Let Everhart Painting Floor Coating Specialists transform your floors with their multi-step coating system. The finished product is spectacular. Call Everhart Painting today and receive $500 off. Everhart Painting, your painter for life. Spokane's hottest music. Break me for so done with you, Hot 96.9. Saturday on Sven Gulli's Halloween Bonanza double feature. Who is this clown? That's me. Watch Kolchak, The Night Strangler, and Trilogy of Terror. It's a real classic. Watch Sven Gulli's Halloween Bonanza. Saturday night at 8 on MeTV 4.2. Betsy Wilkerson doesn't just talk about strengthening community safety. She spent her career doing it. During her tenure on city council, Betsy Wilkerson increased funding for our police and firefighters every single year. Betsy voted to prevent open drug use in our streets while increasing mental health resources. And Betsy secured funding for our Spokane Police and Fire Academies to invest in top-notch training. So don't believe the lies and attacks. Betsy Wilkerson's record of strengthening community safety is clear. I'm Betsy Wilkerson and I'd be honored to have your vote. Country music superstar, Blake Shelton, live in concert. Back to the Honky Tonk Tour, presented by Kubota. With special guests, Dustin Lynch and Emily Ann Roberts. Spokane Arena, March 14th. Get tickets now at ticketswest.com. Produced by Messina Touring Group. With Chevy Silverado and Silverado HD, you can take on the mountains, or you can move them. With the power of up to 36,000 pounds of max available towing and the confidence of an available 13.4-inch diagonal touchscreen, whatever your mountain, there's a Silverado for you. Get 0% financing, plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups, or get 3,500 total cash allowance on this Silverado with a Turbo Max engine. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. From refinishing cabinets, doors, and trim to painting walls and ceilings, Everhart Painting has you covered. Everhart Painting has been Spokane's premier painting contractor for over 50 years. Call Everhart Painting today and receive $500 off. Everhart Painting, your painter for life. Sign up for the 4 News Now Brainstorm at KXLY.com. Well, Washington State and Oregon State have taken the next steps to gain control of the Pac-12 Conference. Welcome into sports. I'm Julian Minnesota. WSU and OSU are claiming that Pac-12 Commissioner George Klyavkov's response to the schools announcing their intention to leave suggests that the departing members gave up their rights to make decisions on the conference's future. Now, in a court filing submitted to Whitman County today, Washington State and Oregon State made the case that they should be the only ones who can decide what happens to the Pac-12 and its assets. WSU and OSU are the only conference members that are have not announced their intentions to join another league next year. A hearing is scheduled for November 14th in Whitman County. Washington State has been bitten by the injury bug once again. Cougars running back Dylan Payne will not play in Saturday's game against Arizona State due to a high ankle sprain. Payne replaced former backup running back Jalen Jenkins. Jenkins was dismissed from the program for violating team rules. Now starting running back Nakia Watson will see increased playing time in Payne's absence. And Cougars head coach Jake Dickert says Watson needs a breakout performance if Washington State wants to beat the Sun Devils. We need big things out of Nakia. You know, we need one of those big games, and uh, obviously a protection game is going to be huge. I mean, not just part of that running back's job. They have very complicated pressure scheme. And freshman running back Javinsky Schlenbaker is expected to fill in as Watson's backup this week. Kickoff against Arizona State is at 5 o'clock on Saturday in Tempe. Injuries have also impacted the Washington State women's basketball team. Cougars guard Joanna Tedder will miss the upcoming season due to recurring injuries she suffered over the last few years. Tedder started in every game for the Cougars last season. She had the second best shooting percentage on the team and was in the top 10 in the Pac-12 in made three. Three pointers. A Gonzaga basketball player has made elite company. Bulldogs forward Anton Watson is one of 20 players named to the Julius Irving Award preseason watch list. The Irving Award is given to the best small forward in all of college basketball. Watson is coming off his best season at Gonzaga. He averaged a career high 11 points a game and was an all WCC honorable mention. Watson is expected to be the focal point for the Bulldogs this season. Gonzaga women's basketball made a little bit of 
of history. Forward Yvonne Egem and guards Brenna Maxwell and Kaylin Trong were named to the Becky Hammond Award preseason watch list. Gonzaga is the first team in history to have three players on the list. The Hammond Award is given to the mid-major conference player of the year in women's college hoops. And last night was opening night in the NBA, but a majority of the teams tip off the season tonight. There are a handful of former Zags and Cougs across the league. Some of the notable ones are former Gonzaga center Chet Holmgren. Holmgren is healthy and ready to go for the Oklahoma City Thunder, and he has an outside chance to win Rookie of the Year. A former Washington State center Muhammad Gay is playing for the Atlanta Hawks in his rookie season. There are a total of 10 Gonzaga players in the NBA right now. This does not include guys like Drew Timmy or Malachi Smith, who were waived by their teams but could find themselves on an NBA roster at some point this season. Gonzaga's latest NBA prospect, Julian Strother, did not suit up or did not play rather in the Denver Nuggets season opener against the LA Lakers last night. Strother had been dealing with an ankle injury throughout the preseason. Now, Washington State has a pair of pros along with Gay. It's also the legend Clay Thompson. Thompson scored 15 points in a loss to the Phoenix Suns last night. And that'll wrap us up for sports. We'll be right back. Stream 4 News now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. Win big at Spokane Tribe Casino this October in the Jeepers Creepers giveaway. Win cash prizes every Thursday and drive away in a 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sahara at the grand prize drawing on Friday, October 27. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. The classic Hollywood story. We meet the hero. The Nissan Frontier. Hero faces seemingly impossible challenge. The plot twist. The hero prevails. In Hollywood, this would be the end. But out here, we're just getting started. Begin your story at Nissan's Truck Month today. Get a low $4.29 per month lease on Frontier. Or get 0% APR financing for 60 months on Titan. Get ready for fall with a John Deere compact utility tractor. Now through October, get a 1025R tractor loader backhoe for as low as $2.99 per month. Visit your Pape Machinery Ag and Turf store today. Pape keeps you moving. Spokane's homeless plan is not working. In the last six years, Spokane's homeless rate has nearly doubled, while the U.S. rate barely increased. And while many unhoused persons genuinely need a helping hand, others have accelerated Spokane's problems of crime and open drug use. Similar-sized U.S. cities don't have these problems, but Spokane became home to the largest homeless camp in the state of Washington, why Spokane? Hear the answer at CuringSpokane.com. At Finley Downtown Toyota, we are loaded with new Tundra and Tacoma trucks, as well as brand new all-wheel drive SUVs just in time for winter. So if you're looking for a touchdown of savings, you can find it at Finley. Excuse me, do you have any plush carpets? <sighs> Maybe. Let's check my nap pile. Is this plush or what? <laughs> I mean. For help from real flooring experts, visit Skelton's Carpet One. Right now at Skelton's Carpet One, you can get help from our flooring experts while saving big and enjoying special financing on beautiful floors for your home. Skelton's Carpet One, here to floor you. Win big at Spokane Tribe Casino this October in the Jeepers Creepers giveaway. Win cash prizes every Thursday and drive away in a 2024 Jeep Wrangler Sahara at the grand prize drawing on Friday, October 27. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. 4 News Now is brought to you by Old World Christmas. Well, we're continuing to follow breaking news out of Lewiston, Maine. At least 16 people are dead in a mass shooting that took place at multiple locations, including a Walmart distribution center, a bowling alley, and a bar. Police have released pictures of the gunman who is still at large. This is a developing story, and we will update you as we learn more. Well, the Washington Department of Health is sounding the alarm about a critical blood shortage. Health experts say O and RH negative blood types are in short supply. They also say blood platelet donations are a critical need right now. Viral season is ramping up, meaning fewer donations are coming in because people are getting sick with the flu, colds, and COVID. There are several ways to donate blood. It only takes about an hour of your time. I just did it on Monday. Let's check in one last time now with meteorologist Matt Gray in that seven-day forecast. 
People are getting sick, Derek? <laughs> I yeah, didn't sound real I great. I had no idea. I also have a cough drop in right now. All right, so we are going to see some pretty winter-like temperatures. So really, you got to crank up the heat. You'll probably need the ice scraper at some point over the next four days with these chilly chilly temperatures. Thankfully, this is just a winter preview mm -hmm. because by the time we get to Halloween and beyond, we're going to start to warm up, start to see some highs in the 50s. It'll feel a little bit more normal again. Yeah, 50s okay. 40s and 30s, that's when you're getting real cold. All right, thank you all for being with us. We'll be uh, back again for Nightside at 11. Hope you join us then. Download the 4 News Now app today. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now.